Now, Damien Morris, Head of Policy of Sandbank. Please, five minutes, no more. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, just to uh, identify ourselves, we're a, a not-for-profit campaigning think tank. Uh, we've been working on uh, ETS reform for over seven years now. Um, and I want to start by reminding us of some good news. Europe's greenhouse gas emissions have fallen far faster than expected. The European Environment Agency estimates that Europe's emissions have already fallen by 23% below 1990 levels in 2014 smashing our 2020 target six years early. In the sectors covered by the EU ETS, verified emissions are also down to where we'd hoped to get them by 2020, 21% below 2005 levels. But before we give the ETS the credit for this, we need to ask what contribution Europe's so-called flagship climate policy has actually made to these emissions reductions via the carbon price. Assessing this is an inexact science, um, but the answers coming out of the literature are extremely discouraging. One study by CDC Klima, now the Institute for Climate Economics, suggests the carbon price drove between zero, zero and 100 million tonnes of abatement between 2005 and 2011. Nothing or next to nothing. And even with the price crash of, uh, of 2006, 2007, the price of carbon over that period reached heights it's gotten nowhere near since. So there was a point where it looked like the carbon price might be starting to make a comeback. After making incremental gains from around April 2014, many analysts expected these gains to accelerate through to 2020 with some predicting prices as high as 30 euros per tonne, including my colleagues at, uh, at ISIS Chuck over there. But following a recurring tendency since the ETS, be ETS began, the analysts have proved too optimistic. The carbon price lost nearly two years of gains in the last six weeks, and now everyone is feeling more cautious. Bloomberg has just slashed two-thirds off its price forecast, following what they're calling Black January, and we would argue this, their price forecast is still over-egged, because their emissions forecast remains too high. So here we are again. It's 2016. After 11 years of this policy, we still don't have a carbon price that drives short-term abatement, let alone long-term investment. And this, despite the fact we've reset the rules not once but twice in phase two and phase three, despite an emergency backloading intervention, and most recently, despite a new market stability reserve, which was supposed to solve this issue once and for all. Now, those amongst you who called for an, uh, an earlier start and stricter parameters for the MSR should be pre feeling pretty vindicated at the moment. Faced with this chronic oversupply and persistent low prices, we've got a few obvious ways to fix this, and none of these are particularly new solutions. We can reduce supply through cancelling allowances, or tightening the cap on a permanent basis. We can limit the temporary supply by re re revisiting the market security reserve parameters or altering the way the new entrance reserve works. Or we can create more certainty over the future carbon price through price floors, price corridors, and such like. Time is short, so I will not go through our proposals on how we would try and fix this in more detail. We've published many of these before over the last year and a half, and we'll be presenting uh, an updated position statement and some new research in the coming weeks. But of course, there are also other solutions in this space other than our own. Instead, the main thought I want to leave you with is this, that the ETS remains very far from fixed, the market stability reserve has not gotten us out of the woods yet, and this ETS revision really, really represents our last chance to fix the scheme. You could excuse some people for thinking it's had far too many chances already. After the recent optimism of Paris, it would be deeply cynical for Europe to keep banking the overachievement of its 2020 targets against future targets and leaving its so-called flagship climate policy to lay idle. Calling something a flagship policy doesn't make it one, no matter how often you say it. It's time we fix this thing once and for all because we can't be having this conversation again in another decade's time. Thank you.